What is up and welcome into the block. I've got my guys, Carl Reed, Blake Brockemeyer here ready to talk some college football. I'm back after a little honeymoon, but hey, I'm ready to talk some ball, guys. It's August. Happy August to you. That means football is just around the corner. And where do I want to start? Fall camp. Before we do that, you at home, like, share, subscribe, continue to get us out there and build up this YouTube channel and the block as we build it from the ground up. Speaking of building, a lot of teams getting ready to build their teams as we head into 2022. Fall camp storylines that you're looking out for. Carl, I'm going to go to you first because you've got an under the radar one that I really like. What I'm really interested to see and what I'm going to be watching early on is Mark Whipple, offensive coordinator at the University of Nebraska. Can he get that offense going? He had a great year last year with Pitt, and Pat Narduzzi has taken a bunch of shots at Whipple in the last couple of weeks. But Scott Frost wanted Whipple there really bad, and that was intriguing to me because Frost was a guy who has always called his own offense. And with Frost being under the pressure a little bit, his seat is very hot. Can Whipple come in, develop Casey Thompson, help the receiving core, which is aided by Texas transfer Marcus Washington? Can he get that offense going? I think that's going to be huge in Lincoln, Nebraska. Mark Whipple is going to be needed to help Scott Frost keep his job and get the Nebraska Cornhuskers back on track. Yeah, if he can just do a little bit of what he did at Pitt last year with Kenny Pickett and work that magic with Casey Thompson, Nebraska is going to be a lot different look this year than they've been. I think uh, you're right, Carl. I really like uh, the hire. I think uh, Whipple's proven that uh, he's he's one of the top OCs in the game. It can really open up and, and, and get the passing game going at Nebraska if Casey Thompson can stay healthy. I'm looking at LSU's quarterback situation. I want to see – can Jane Daniels take take the spot transferring in from Arizona State? Is Garrett Nussmeyer going to be able to, to, to win the job and, and give Brian Kelly a long-term solution at quarterback down in, at, at, in the bayou? Uh, is Miles Brennan a guy? I've heard his name pop up lately as a guy that, that's going to be in competition. And then they've got a, a, a freshman that uh, was very coveted uh, in the South and Walker Howard. So they've got some great options to choose from. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what Brian Kelly goes with, if he goes with the proven uh, starter that's played some, or if he's going to go with a young guy that can he can build his offense around uh, on, a, on a LSU team that's got a really brutal schedule this year. What's interesting to me about that conversation is Jaden Daniels, many people thought that he was going to come in and run away with the job, and that does not appear to have happened. And you have to remember, Jaden started his career at Arizona State as a young guy, that was highly talking about the NFL. He was on scouts and pro personnel guys radar. And if he left a starting job at Arizona State and doesn't end up being a start at LSU, I think that that is one of those transfer portal stories that kids need to think about before they just jump ship. Yeah, he's got he's still got a few weeks to compete, Carl. Don't give up on him too early, but I, I hear you on that. You got to make the right decision, especially if you're a guy that's already starting. So that'll be curious to see how what they do uh, at LSU this year. I'm sure uh, that will be a very big decision for Brian Kelly to, to build his offense on and be able to sell recruits on the future uh, of LSU because they've got the talent, obviously, in Louisiana to compete. We've got some tough teams to compete with in the SEC and uh, got some really good options at quarterback, I think. If you know anything about Brian Kelly, you know that he's going to make the decision that he feels like gives the LSU Tigers the best chance to win, and he wants to win right now. I like what Carl said a while ago on this show. It's a cautionary tale because Jaden Daniels, probably most of us assumed he'd be the starter, and now it's proven that he must compete to win that job. It's not just don't get in front of the nuss bus, don't get me wrong, but – Again, I think this is a guy that has a pivotal year ahead because if he doesn't win that job, he will show a lot of people at home what you need to consider as you enter the transfer portal. And I like the Mark Whipple pick. All those one-score losses for Nebraska last year, if they had a guy like Whipple at offensive coordinator, potentially different outcomes as they now head into 2022 in the Big Ten West, which could be wide open. Let's talk about brand rankings, though, because we talk about these college football programs as they head into the season. We know what the general aura about them is, but 
24 seven sports has surveyed 1000 high school football athletes across the country and asked them, what are the biggest brands in college football to you? And we got some interesting results. Blake, I want to know what stood out to you the most. What stood out to me is the SEC is king. I mean, they've got 12 of the 25 teams in the top 25. If you add Oklahoma and Texas to the mix, uh, that really stood out to me. I mean, you've got, uh, I mean, not to slide on Mississippi State, but when, when, when recruits are feeling like Mississippi State's one of the top brands in college football, then you know the SEC is is really uh, far and away the top conference in college football. The other thing that stood out to me is that the Big Ten uh, has got seven seven teams, if you add USC and UCLA to the mix, uh, which is is a pretty good representative. Uh, there's some teams on there that I thought maybe could could have made it that aren't, but uh, I thought that was interesting. And then, of course, Pac-12 has one team in Oregon. Uh, if you look at that with USC and UCLA headed to the Big Ten. So it's, 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 it, it just basically shows you what everybody knows is that SEC is king and you've got a couple outliers in there with Clemson. But, uh, but, but high school kids want to play in the best conference in college football if they can. What high school kids are always looking at is the South cares about football more. SEC has this thing. They say it just means more. And that honestly, guys, is the truth. The fans are fanatic. The attention to detail that the SEC schools has is something different. The Big Ten is also taking a step in that direction, trying to compete. But in the South, from the time kids are very young, I'm talking five or six years old, they get a football put in their face and that they're expected to play. All young boys in the South are expected to play football. And it's a major thing in tradition, no matter what state you're in in the South. I think the Big Ten, though, is working really, really hard to close the gap. And those two conferences are taking moves to separate themselves from the rest of the pack. And it will be interesting to me to see what happens with the ACC, the Big 12, and the Pac-12 as expansion continues to happen and people keep making moves. Yeah, I think the, you know, obviously Ohio State fans care about football. They're passionate football fans. I've been to a game uh, at the Horseshoe when Texas played there in 2005. So I, I've seen their passion. I, I thought uh, Notre Dame might be a little bit higher up on the list. Their fans are very passionate fans and they've, they usually have a, a pretty good product on the field, but uh, I mean, they were they were up there pretty high, but they weren't as high as I thought they would have been. Interesting to see these conversations unfold as we talk to high school athletes about the perception of the new era of the sport. Also weird that we're talking about the new Big Ten and the SEC already when we talk about brand names as well. I want to close with this, guys. The 30 under 30 list is something that we do at 24-7 Sports every year. That is a massive hit, and our guy Chris Hummer does a great job of surveying the landscape and getting some of the top up-and-coming young coaches in our sport today. So I want to talk to you guys and ask, who do you want to highlight that's on this list? And Blake, I want to start to you with a certain individual at the Texas program who you're a big fan of. Yeah, Brandon Harris is a guy that, that, that's that been at Texas for a few years now. He's a former quarterback that played in the ACC and the SEC at LSU in North Carolina. Uh, he's a he's a chill, likable guy that relates well to both parents and recruits. Uh, he turned down an opportunity recently uh, in the NFL, which shows me that he's that he's committed to the college game, and that, and that's what he wants to uh, cut his teeth out at, at the next level. So uh, I think he's a guy that that's done a, obviously a really good job at Texas recruiting. Uh, with with coach Sark uh, and I think he's a guy that uh, is, is going to be a, a big time riser in college football and be a uh, you know just keep keep evolving and keep expanding his role at Texas and eventually will uh, you know maybe get something even bigger and better uh, at, at a different school. I think that that's an excellent pick a lot of guys remember him from his playing days but he has been a big part of Texas nuts and bolts behind the operation and a lot of the things that they're putting together. I'm gonna to go with Marquise Watkins, D-line coach out of Rutgers. He's a young guy, of course, we are talking about the 30 for 30 list so everybody's young, but D-line coaches across the country have been telling me the last two or three seasons, it's why this guy was GAN at Ole Miss, that he was gonna be one of the next 
big time D line coaches in the country. You see what some of these guys are getting paid now when you look around and how pivotal they are to the development of a defense. He's the next rising star. And I think soon it's going to be pretty hard for Rutgers to hold on to him, but he's going to be a guy that's going to be coveted by all the elite programs in the nation. And he's a huge developer of defensive line talent and can really help solidify a program on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of better head coaches to work under than Greg Shiana defensively. He's one of the all-time good ones. And uh, he'll, he'll definitely learn some things under him that he can add to his toolbox. Always good to know who is on this list as they could be the future developers of players in our sport. A lot of fun on this show today and always good to know how you can support it. Like, share, subscribe here on the YouTube channel as we continue to build the block from the ground up. Check these two out on Twitter, then head to 247sports.com for all things college football. Gentlemen, it's always fun.